Hello, hello, and welcome. Welcome once again to the Secrets of the High Demand Coach podcast. And I am here with yet another high demand coach who looks a little different than your average coach, but is every bit as impactful. And you see what I mean by that in just a moment. We've got with us today the one and only Dylan Evans, who set, who founded Simple Salt to protect businesses from internet crime, providing practical and clear guidance that works. Today, he helps companies to prevent internet crime more efficiently, better, faster, and stronger than conventional approaches. And he's led teams and built capabilities in traditional cybersecurity for over 10 years, covering manufacturing, retail, and financial services. Ladies and gentlemen, this is someone who knows what he is talking about. We're going to change things up on you just a little bit at the start of the show here. Uh, right out of the gate, we're going to ask what I think is one of your favorite questions, and that is this. So, Del Dylan, welcome to the show. We're throwing you right into the fire here. We're, we're going the full enchilada. Uh, so I want to start off with this question. I ask it of all my guests, and it is, what is the biggest secret that you wish wasn't a secret at all? What's that one thing you wish everybody watching or listening today knew? The biggest secret of the cyber industry is that it's not designed to stop crime. Everybody, like if you wanna, if you wanna stop crime for your business, if you are hoping to avoid getting nailed, uh, maybe you're hoping to avoid fraud. Maybe you're hoping to avoid sensitive customer secrets getting out. Maybe all your pricing getting out. What? you would normally do is go to the cyber industry. You would go to some sort of technical, maybe your IT shop is going to help you out. But it's an open secret in the industry that 99% of our effort is not aimed at that problem. It's aimed at making people defensible, being able to say, don't fire me. I did what a reasonable person would do. And in a fast growing, fast moving industry like cyber, this cat and mouse game, what stops crime and what is defensible don't have a lot of overlap. Wow. So I want to focus in on a, a specific ver or a, a, a specific grouping of that uh, is a better way of doing it. And, and talk about this world of small business and and maybe even some medium sized businesses because a lot of folks hear cybersecurity and uh, that's, that's that's just not uh, we don't have to worry about that. All right, that's, that's right. for like Google and you know Target and uh, whoever is on the news uh, last week of getting hacked. Uh, so. How real is the threat to to your small mom and pop or to your you know kind of medium sized local uh, manufacturing company? Pretty big. There is a perception among these businesses that no one's going to target them, and to a degree, that's correct. No one is going to spend 150, 200 k putting together a white glove attack for. I don't know, like a like a copper pipe fitting business, right? You're right, but you are going to get attacked. It's just not specific to you, right? Think think of it like a boat trawler. It's it's just trying finding what it can get. And the question is not is anyone out to get you. The question is as people as these these are these are businesses that are call centers as they go and attack businesses and and try to defraud businesses like yours are you going to be the one that gets nailed this week wow so uh, i've actually heard you talk about this before as i was researching the episode but um is it helpful to to for us especially when we're looking at protecting ourselves to be more specific about what we're protecting or or even mm -hmm. understanding why they're really attacking us i mean i get emails I'm like why would you even send that i, I don't understand so why is it that folks attack us and, and how does that help us to shape the way that we protect ourselves yeah that is really the key to success here if you are going for defensibility what you want to do is you want to get a lot of boxes checked because an auditor is going to come along and they're going to say, did you do this? And you need to show them evidence that you did that thing. And you're going to need to do that for 100, 200 pages of check boxes. That's what compliance is. If you want to avoid crime, 
that's specific to your business. What is threatening to like a reseller who, you know, the, buys a big shipment and resells it on 6% margin and, you know, they're, they're uh, waiting on the check clearing before, before the other one gets cashed. That's a very different risk than a lawyer, like a, a divorce lawyer. Uh, if someone drains your bank account in the wrong week and you're, you're a bar, you're a reseller, that could be millions that you'd be out. And, and your bank only gives you 24 hours to report fraud, right? For, for, for ACH transactions. Whereas like, if you're a divorce lawyer, you lose your client's file, man, that guy is going to come after you. That's his life at his worst moment. Yeah. Uh, and maybe you own a retail establishment and none of those things apply to you and you don't care at all. It really comes down to what is really going to hurt your business. Yeah. Yeah. So with that, there, there's there's kind of three approaches to it. Um, to describe a little bit about what the three different approaches are to security and uh, which, if they're better or if they come in sequence, how do we start to approach that? Sure. The default perspective, this defensibility first, this compliance first, this is the dominant method. And so think if you are the, the security leader for a Fortune 500, you're there maybe two, three years. You're not hoping to solve the problems. You're just there to defend against the lawsuit should, should the breach happen on your watch. And so you, you get down some list of right things to do. You do everything. You get lots of evidence. And this doesn't have to work because your goal isn't to stop crime. It's to keep your job. And so this actually works. It works at helping C-suites keep their jobs. But the same approach is packaged and that's what you find if you like, how do I stop internet crime from ending my business on Google? You'll see the same top 10 listicles that are, are driving the, how do I keep my job? Just thoughtlessly regurgitated, you know, for, for you. And that's not, not, maybe not your same goal. Uh, a lot of businesses that do have like a really thoughtful approach to risk and crime. It happens within the finance department, uh, but businesses that are too small to have really effective and creative, it's like A plus finance departments may not realize uh, how, how scary things are. And they're here on, on the news, they're seeing big examples of very scary things, but they might not have a good idea of how that might overlap with their actual business risk. Right. Right. So uh, I've also heard you talk about this idea of process engineering from a, a, a standpoint of protecting ourselves. And, uh, and I think that that's kind of a missing piece for a lot of folks and maybe even feels more accessible once you actually understand what it is. So Talk to us a little about what yeah. that is and um, and how folks can start to apply that in their business. This is usually where most businesses have the easiest wins. If you think about how much you could spend on tech, or maybe you are spending on tech, boxes, the $20,000 boxes that sit in your closet and blink. If you think about your true threats, what is really going to nail you? you're probably going to have a lot better success by tightening the way you do accounts payable or tightening the way you'd send trusted communications to your customers, send them invoices, right? Or, or exchange sensitive data with them. Maybe you want to just get out of the IT game entirely because, you know, a, a SaaS provider, a, you know, internet service, is going to do a better job than you at all this IT stuff anyway. 
And so you don't have to worry about all these vulnerabilities and technical jibber jabber. It process is often the easiest way, whether it is making sure you're, you're doing one thing and tightening it up or just getting out of the business entirely. Uh, and a lot of businesses don't realize those are options. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, so give us an example of that, because I, I think this is really helpful for folks. So let's kind of drill into this accounts payable, right? Uh, I think everyone's gotten the email like, hey, can you send me, uh, you know, send me a hundred dollars, you know, and slide it under the door. Some, uh, it's just, it feels like the most random stuff, but what does an attack look like in that space, right? And and how can we protect ourselves against it? Sure. There are, there are so many variations. And one of the ones... That, that you mentioned, very popular. Uh, they just send an invoice and and they hope you pay it. They hope you just, like, you're not organized and you, you just trust that this invoice is legit. Google got scammed out of like 50, 100 million dollars about five years ago through exactly this thing. They, they just paid all the invoices that were sent to them. And this is easy to fix. You just... I mean, we've, we've had the technology for doing this since the 60s. Uh, Reway match is a pretty standard thing. You can, you can get it commodity. Uh, you issue a PO, and that's kind of like this internal authorization to pay a vendor. Works great. It's, it's boring. Uh, it's more, uh, there are other possibilities, though. For instance, I mean, think about how many times you or a friend has gotten your email broken into. Imagine what would happen if one of your vendor's email was broken into and they send you an invoice with a different payment mechanism, a different deposit information, uh, a different link to, to pay their invoice, and you trust them and you just click that thing. You see, ah, it's from Debbie. I'm going to pay it. And then some criminal runs off with a lot of money that, that you and Re Debbie aren't going to be able to recover. That's also very common. There, you, you might get called by someone pretending to be Debbie, uh, trying to, just trying to trick you. There are so many variations. And usually they're just trying to slip through the cracks because if you're just paying everybody willy-nilly, they're going to have more success. And if there's a really specific way you, you pay your vendors and that's it, that you're going to be a lot more resistant to attacks of this sort. Yeah, it's so true. So I'm wondering if you could just kind of tie this all in together for us. Give us a couple either steps or things that we should think about. What are some actionable, uh, what are some actionable steps that we can take coming out of this interview to help better secure our small, medium sized businesses? Yeah. It's easier than you think. If if you have a perception that the cyber industry is incomprehensible and it's technical and it seems to cost a lot and you're not sure if it's even working, you're right. Like crime is exploding 40% growth year over year over the last 10 years. You're right. It's easier to fix than you think. And there's no magic techno wizard stuff. You can solve this through mostly common sense. Think about what you are at risk for. What's going to truly nail you? What's going to end you? And then say, what's the easiest way I can solve that problem? If you need help, uh, we have plenty of content available on our website and, you know, we're always available for, for talking, but don't be, don't be afraid. This is not a difficult thing. Uh, and you don't need to spend a lot to get some really great results. Yeah. And that's great. So and then you actually bring me right to my next slide. There's some folks thinking like, 
uh, a couple of things. One, I don't want to do this by myself, right? Uh, it's just, the, it, it yeah. does, it feels overwhelming. And and also, hey, this is the first time someone in this world has spoken my language. Uh, and, and they want to be able to connect with you. They want to learn more. How can they find out more about you and Simple Soul? Uh, we're on LinkedIn. We're on Google. Uh, we're slowly building up that that marketing machine. Marketing is harder than it looks, guys, as you probably all well know. Uh, we have a lot of free content. Like I mentioned, there's uh, practical guides to using a password manager effectively, the right way to outsource IT and finance. Um, pro tip, you don't want to just get a part-time bookkeeper to do it all for you. Um, she's going to get nailed. Uh, just like just like if you did it in-house. We are also available to just talk. We have uh, an easy service uh, called, we call it a checkup, which provides uh, a basic assessment of how scared you should be and the easiest things you can do about it and how hard they are. We also offer services for larger businesses uh, maybe a couple hundred million, those those uh, um, folks who have a lot to lose and really can't afford anything like that. Uh, if you have questions about security, that's our me message and our priority here. We just want to make security accessible and, and demystify these hidden secrets that... Uh, we wish were better understood at, in the world at large. Yeah. Well, Dylan, I know that, that this has been just the right thing for the right time for some folks. Uh, and those of you watching, listening, I, I highly encourage you. The, the website's phenomenal. There's so much content on there. We'll put it in the show notes. Um, uh, he, Dylan really, you felt it already in this, uh, but he's got a great way of making this really seemingly complex world very simple, understandable, and actionable. So head on over there. Uh, check out the work that they do and reach out for help. Uh, you don't have to do it alone. Uh, Dylan, thanks for being on the show. Just a, an honor and privilege having you here. Fantastic conversation. For those of you watching or listening today, you know your time and attention mean the world to us. I hope you got as much out of this conversation as I know I did, and I cannot wait to see you next time. Take care.